for that. Oh, I knew that was coming. And I got stuck. Great, nice. Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 4 of Spyro Year of the Dragon, part of the Reignited Trilogy. We're on the home stretch for finishing the three main Spyro games, and in this episode we're going to Molten Crater to take on the very last level that we can do here, but we cannot 100% until we get our next animal buddy in the second world. And then we get to travel to the next world. So, yeah, there's a key here, we can do that. We can't get all the eggs and we can't get all the gems. It's not like some levels where you can get like all of one thing or all of the other. No, this one you just straight up just can't get any of it done. You... Oh yeah, these guys have a really quick attack. Making them probably the hardest big enemy to kill. There's one that comes close in the next world. Like, one of the levels in the next world. But, I still think they're the worst. Also, that's actually pretty cool looking. And I really like it. It looks sharp. Oh look, an egg though, right here. Ricky. Uh, I don't know any Rickies. So I can't come up with a cool celebrity name for that. Oh, I knew that was coming. And I got stuck. Great, nice. Our first death in the game is because we got stuck. Because like I said, these guys attack way too quickly. Like, why do they have such a fast attack speed, man, for such an early game enemy? Because there's four worlds in this game, it's not like we're already like a quarter of the way through once we beat this level or something, you know? Or um, a quarter of the way, like a third of the way through. We'll only be a quarter of the way. Oh yeah, and keep Sparks healthy. I know that. Once again, a little late, all this stuff should be told in the first level. I still think the first level of every Spyro game should be the longest, but make it super easy and just, I don't know, tell you how to do everything, you know? And I mean everything, not just one or two things. Teach you how to defeat big enemies, armored enemies, uh, you know, charge, flame, your health, how to use the camera, how to use the atlas, how to use all that stuff, you know? Also, they reuse the pigs from... Uh, Spyro uh, 1, despite not actually being the same model in the original games. I don't think I can make that without taking burn damage on my booty. Because I took it backwards. I'm pretty sure you're supposed to start from this way and then go the other way. And for whatever reason, I always do it completely backwards. And by the way, this is the end of the level. That's seriously it. The end of the level is already right here. And see, we need some kind of, like, bird guy to get in here, so... Yeah, that's something we can't quite do yet. And then we need money bags to get in there. So, we'll go and grab this egg first. Here, take this egg. They were giving them away at the Tiki Lodge last night. Right on, Rocky. Thank you, Curly from the Three Stooges. Oh, he's gonna sneeze again. We had, like, three of those already in the last two episodes. <laughs> And then, talking to him opens up this little section, which you can grab ten gems. Ten dollars worth of gems, and then we can go and open up this chest. Which, honestly, I feel like chests and stuff in this game drop less gems than they used to. But now we gotta go pay money back, so we'll go talk to him. At least we can get two eggs in there. And then there's two eggs over there. Spyro, you're just in time. I saw two egg thieves run through this door. Well... Actually, they paid me to guard their hideout, but that's irrelevant. I'll happily let you through the gate to chase them down for a small finder's fee. By the way, their mouth doesn't line up with the audio. I, just to say that, if you guys think it's out of whack, it's not the recording. It's the game. Thank you, Spyro. And best of luck catching those dastardly egg thieves. Now, why are the Egg Thieves back, exactly? I want to know why they're back. Also, 
Why in this game did they choose dragon eggs, considering we've already seen dragon eggs in the original game? And they were small. Are they just like the more developed ones? Do the eggs physically grow? And by the way, that's one of the skill points. The other skill point we can't quite get yet. So, yeah. Can't quite do everything yet. But there are lots of gems in here. Not enough to make up for how much money bags took from you, though, because I believe there's more than 100 gems in the part that we can't get to. So, we'll go around here and collect everything. Yeah, I can tell that when I play Spyro where my Xbox sits, it interferes with the connectivity, because sometimes I'll get pulled from side to side too much, or my controls just aren't responsive enough. And it's, that's my fault, because I where I have it sitting. But it's the only way I can record Xbox, and I have so many cool Xbox, or not Xbox games, just games that happen to be on the Xbox as well, that I want to play, like Conquer. I had that on my Xbox as well. Probably going to record one episode of it before I'm done my recording for the day, simply because I've never played it, and I just kind of want to start it to see what it's like, and probably have it like a once a week thing. Kind of like I'm doing Fairly Odd Parents, well, I'll just have like a video in a blue moon, because... I find that game really, really weird, and people love it, but I just don't find it the most fun to play. Like, personally, it's just a game that I'm not having the most fun. Like, I like the storyline behind it and stuff, and I like Fairly Odd Parents, but I had picked the wrong one. I had meant to pick the other uh, cool PS2 game, and we have Moira from Overwatch, before Overwatch was even a thing. I know, in this game, yes, because this is the re... Oh yeah, he bugs out every now and then. Hi. He's supposed to say there's another thief and then turn on the supercharge, but if you notice, it glitches when you beat it, and he doesn't actually talk to you properly. Also, in the original, it didn't take you this long to get to your max tier of supercharge, and you're not supposed to kill him that easily. And we have Kermit the Frog. And that's the last dragon we can get here. Right on. So then we need to get this right here, and thank you. And that should be all the gems in here, right? Oh. Let's leave. And we might as well just leave the level now, because we literally cannot do anything else. So, let's leave home. Or, leave to go home. How about this go home? But we're not really going home. Yeah, we literally made no gems out of that. Thanks, money bags. Thing is, Spyro doesn't get any new power-ups in this game either. Let's head on over to the balloon. Ah yes. Now to go to New Worlds, you have to get all the animal or all the animals, all the characters. But so we have the lion, kangaroo, cloud, tiki, and seal all activate this Omega balloon device, which takes us to the Midday Gardens. We were in um, Sunrise Spring. Now we're in Midday Garden. Wait, it says entering Buzz's dungeon. This doesn't look like Midday Gardens. What do you mean? Listen carefully, you stupid girl. I'm only going to ask you one more time. Why haven't you disposed of that infernal dragon? I, I've tried to scare him off, your highness. But he's just not afraid of anything. Not afraid? Not afraid? Why have I been training you all these years? Use some magic! Here's a spell book. Whip up a monster and eliminate him! Uh, kill him? I don't care what you do, you useless brat! As long as you get rid of him! Okay, let's see what we got here. Mm, this ought to do it. You can't keep me caged up in here forever! <laughs> you there! Get me out of here! This is unacceptable! You! Come here! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> what the devil? <laughs> Yeah, and that's Buzz. Yeah, in this game, they really want Spyro dead. It's not like Ripto, which he found you just to be a nuisance and was more goofy. No, the Sorcerer's is out for blood. 
When I heard the sorceress was planning to ambush you, I got here as fast as I could. No worries, though. This wussy green toad will be no match for the two of us. And surprisingly enough, you actually do need your partner. So what you have to do is you have to headbutt him until he ends up in the lava. And then once he's in the lava, Sheila will deal with him. But then comes the hard part afterward. Where he's now going to come and charge at you. And your best bet is to kind of like dip out of the way. Because in the original, you could just let him follow you. In this game, he kind of is more aggressive. And he's a lot more difficult to deal with. So that's my strategy for you. And then he does change up his like after roll phase there. Where, you know, he does different things. Also, if you dodge him, like, the first time, he seems to not be able to really focus on you very well. Are we at the part now where he... Yeah, he creates, like, a fire barrier. And then... Yeah. You gotta time it just right, otherwise you won't be able to do anything. But it's... Honestly... Wait, why did it... I got stuck on him. Do you see that? I was, like, charging underneath his belly, and it just got me stuck. And there we go. Yeah, and the bosses in this actually have a lot more health than, like, you'd think. Like, or they... I guess technically they have a, they have less health than Spyro 2. But at the same time, they have way more gimmicks and way more creativity with, like, how you deal with them. And every time you, you free one of these animal partners that you get, they do help you with the boss that you're fighting, including the final boss, but not the bonus boss at the very end of the game. I believe he'll start shooting fire at the beginning, right? Or is it this part that he shoots fire in? See, I don't get what I took fire damage from. I think the sparks left behind actually damage you. Which means they left the trail from the fire way too long. Because there's no safe way to do it. Because he'll create a fire barrier when he's done using his fire attack. And he used to be able to start up his fire right there. Without this section. There we go. And he just dies. Grayson. Yay, Grayson. Okay, that one was new. But that animation was short. I didn't push a single button. That animation just felt like it cut halfway off. But another 100% level done. Right on. Let's leave. I do like the loading screen for this. Like, it's even intimidating. But it, I guess it's kind of like a volcano at night. You know, you got like the, the smoke and the haze from the volcano. And then the stars from the night sky, which are somehow still visible. And then the red being the light from the lava. You know, pretty cool, pretty cool idea. Now we're in the next home world. And we can 100% complete this before we call it an episode. I think we'll probably go and do Sergeant... I didn't go in here. Darn hitbox. But I guess, we. yep, yeah, we have to deal with Bianca again. Hey, Dragon, you've managed to survive longer than I expected, but you haven't the slightest idea what sort of dangers lie ahead of you. I suggest you grab your cat friend and whatever eggs you found and hightail it back home while you still can. I'm telling you this for your own good, you know. Hmm, do I trust that? I don't know. I think I'm going to stick to whatever I'm doing. Also, like I said, homeworld stay the same, but now every level will have 500 gems as opposed to 400. Homeworld's speedways stay the exact same. And now the levels where you help the like your friends out, like the ones that you free, and then you do their level as them, those ones up increase in gems, so this one will have 500, but it'll stay three eggs. They always stay three eggs. Egg counts never change, gem counts change. And we got an egg over here, Mingus. I have no idea if there's ever been a famous person named Mingus, but thank you. In this ice cave. So, the first level that we can do, that we can also 100% complete, is Icy Peak. It's essentially like a Canadian-themed level, hockey... Uh, skating, ice, snow, stuff like that, gondolas, etc, etc. With like Bob and Doug as a reference to, well, Bob and Doug. And we got Dave the Barbarian, the underwater dragon. But as I was saying, like, yeah, that, that's that level. It's not really the greatest level. Like, it's not a bad level, it's just kind of a generic level. Why are you pointing up there? 
I can't get up there yet, Sparks. You're an idiot. No way those are closer than the gems literally right here. But Sparks is like, oh yeah, man, they're, they're definitely closer. I also hear that thief in the background. Don't don't think I don't hear you up there, buddy. Now, my least favorite... Actually, no, I won't say it's my least favorite. There's one level that's more annoying just because of the challenges. Hey, yeah, Zoe told me you can open up a portal if you hit this. And this opens up Enchanted Towers. In the original game, it actually used to have like a little mini cutscene where you'd see the portal zoom out to like increase in size, and then the name would pop up all cool. Enchanted Towers, it's like a hippie commune in like these sky tower places that they built a statue for the sorcerer. It's kind of a weird level. Definitely the most boring of the levels in this level. Or in this world, I mean. Those are levels, these are worlds. And we got another egg. Trixie Tang from Fairly Odd Parents. Funny that we we're playing that game as well as this game. Uh, but yes, th that's a thing, I guess. Um, no, aren't there a bunch of. Yeah, there are a bunch of vases back here. And some singular red gems that we missed because we were chasing a thief around, but still. And, oh, more gems right here. And this is also where we unlock Sergeant Bird, by the way. That's what his name is, for those who don't know. Him, he's honestly my least favorite of them. A lot of people prefer him over the other characters that have been throughout Spiral. I personally don't like his sections that much. I always found the controls to be awkwardly clunky and kind of slow-paced for a Spiral game, but that's just me. Like, he's not terrible. I don't mind playing as him. He's just my least favorite of them all. Like I said, I just prefer other characters. My favorite one's actually in the next world. And the character after it's pretty cool, but I'd probably have to put Sheila as my second, and then the last one as my first, and then Sergeant Bird as the fourth. Oh yeah, might as well get this dialogue out of the way. We all know what this does. We literally had just ended um, Spyro 2 before we started this, and we literally used that power-up like a dozen times in that game, so... Nothing new there. Bamboo Terrace, pretty simple level. Can't 100% though. Uh, Country Speedway, we can once again 100% complete. This level we can 100% complete too, but we have to come back. Um, there's another egg right here. We have Modesty. Don't know any famous Modesties, so that's a thing, I guess. Maybe, I don't know. And then we got to go and... Oh yeah, I forgot to mention what another one of the levels was. Uh, let me grab these gems before I get sidetracked again. The last level over here is Spooky Swamp. It's another level one level you can 100% complete. Pretty simple level, except for there's a Sheila minigame there that is um, ridiculously difficult if you don't know the the like whole pattern behind it. Once you figure out the pattern, you're like, oh, this is actually easy. And the last egg here is Matt LeBlanc, who played in Friends. Now, all we're missing for gems should be that one vase that we need this power for. Die, dragon. Dragon? Also, I missed this gem, apparently. Don't know how I missed that, but we did. Pew! Now, is this all the gems? No, I missed some gems somewhere. Over here, apparently. Oh, right here. And there we go. Right on. So, anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, join the Discord and Patreon in the links below, and in the next episode, we'll be doing the Sergeant Bird level very soon. See you guys next time for another exciting Spyro video. Peace.